I literally parked up and got out the car. And it just starts raining for no reason. I guess for this video, I don't need to be outside, but it would have been cool to just do my outros like I always do outside. A few moments later. I went outside for one second because it stopped. I open up my door and it starts lashing. You cannot make this shit up. But today we're going to be updating the service history in the iDrive. I did mess around with it just a little bit, just so I can see if it works and it does actually work. But a lot of people were asking me about it, if we can update the history on the iDrive, on the G series. And I thought we couldn't, but after just messing around, I figured out that we actually can. So I'm just gonna show you exactly how to do it. And it is very easy to do because when you do services yourself, you can actually put it into the iDrive. And just so you guys know, whenever you use your computer to update the service history, you don't actually change it in the BMW cloud so you're just kind of changing it inside of your vehicle so if you were to go to an actual bmw dealer for a service and they were to use the bmw servers or cloud and it would actually wipe out your one and then you would just get everything that's in the bmw cloud so we can only do everything locally inside of your car it's nothing to do with the bmw servers so the only thing you need is a laptop and your enet cable so you guys seen for a beamer code we needed the enet cable and the little adapter for your phone but since my laptop has an enet cable i'm not going to need to use the adapter if your laptop has a USB-C, you can use the adapter. But if your laptop has the normal USBs, then you'll need to buy the USB adapter. But for me, all I'm going to need to do is the OBD and the Ena cable. For now, you don't need to plug in anything. All you have to do is just go on your laptop. So after you're on your computer, you're going to have to download HU Service Manager. And after you install it, we can click into it so we can see how to use it. I'm not sure if you guys can hear this laptop. It is quite loud, so hopefully it's not too much in the way. So whenever you open up the app, you can see that we're using the light or the free version. I'm pretty sure the pro version is like 500 euros, so there's no really point. The only difference I really see is that we can't read from the car. We have to manually write down all our previous services, remember them, and then import them into this app. So that's like the only main thing I can see the difference in. So let's go into our history. So vehicle status, service requirements, service history and then we can see everything that has been carried out for me i didn't have the service provider before but in the service manager i had to do something so i just got a random code that i think this one could be somewhere in japan some bmw provider so i just put in the code 47001 and then what we have to do is copy each individual thing save it into like a notepad and then we can write it into the car so for example, so it is pretty simple. All we have to do is just copy all of them onto a notepad so it's easier to copy into the actual service manager. I'll do one with you guys just so you know what I mean. So you can see the first one is from 2019. So 2019 of the 12th month on the 22nd. This has been carried out when the car had 11 kilometers. And for me, I didn't have the BMW service partner code, but if you guys have it, put it in here just because I added my own. I'm gonna add this in in case you guys have one as well. So 47001. And then you can write down what was actually carried out. So for the first one, we can see that it was the pre-delivery inspection, pre-delivery pre check or inspection. And then let's do the same thing for the other ones. So let me quickly write down all the other ones. And then this is everything that my car has. Also, I did my own service when I first got the car. So let me add this one in as well. And I did the service myself on 2025, June 16th. I had 61,300 kilometers. And usually when you do it yourself or it's someone independent that, that's doing your service, you usually put the BMW code to just five zeros. So zero, 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 zero. And that usually means someone independent done the service on your car. And when I got the car, the only thing I done was the engine oil. And whenever you see engine oil, that means that's the engine oil and the oil filter together. Cause you know, you're meant to do them together. So I did the engine oil and the air intake filter. And in BMW terms, that's called the air cleaner element. So let's put down air cleaner element. Now that we have everything neatly saved, we can now slowly start putting everything onto the HU service manager. You wanna right click in this empty space right here and then click add. After that, we can start going from top down. So from the earliest to the latest. So we can see my first one right here was 2019 December and the 22nd. So we can slowly start filling in everything. So 2019, the 12th and the 22nd, the car had 11 kilometers on it. Workshop ID, once again, for some reason in my system, the BMW service ID didn't pop up. On my G30, it did. So that's a little bit strange, but I just looked up a random one in Japan and it gave me this number. So I'll just leave it at that just to keep it professional. Because when you're using this service manager, you need the workshop code. So if you didn't have one as well, just try to look up a random one and just put in anything, to be honest. You can even put in the five zeros if you really want. But it's nice to get an actual code just to keep it professional. So once again, the code was 47001. We can say it was done by a BMW dealer. 
And then here under add, we can see type. So we put in what was done. We can see on the first one, it was just a pre-delivery check. So we look for pre-delivery inspection. So you click add. I'm gonna choose that it was done by a BMW dealer and then service status. So you can say if it was on time, late or incomplete. All of these were on time. So I'll just keep on time selected. After that, you press okay. And you can see the first one is added and that's literally it. So I just do the exact same thing for the rest of them. So once again, add 2021, the 12th and the 9th. Car mileage was at 26,434. Once again, I'll keep at the Japan one that I found. On time, dealer. On that time, it was done the engine oil brake fluid, micro filter, and a vehicle inspection. Okay, do the second one done, and so on. 2022, 12th month, and the 10th. It was a 40,066, same workshop, on time, BMW dealer, and what was done here? Just the engine oil and the emissions inspection. So it should be here at the bottom, emissions test, add, okay. And let's do the fourth one, 2023, 12th month, 15th, 51,428. Once again, same thing, engine oil, brake fluid, vehicle check, micro filter, air cleaner element, that's the intake, and spark plugs. And now this is gonna be the new one that my system doesn't have, since that's the one that I done myself. So we can finally put in the last one, which is 2025 06 16. 61,300 on time. And for the last one, since it wasn't a BMW dealer, I'm gonna select independent, and for workshop ID, I'll just put in five zeros. So one, two, three, four, five. So just five zeros is fine or literally whatever you want. You can do one, two, three, four, five. It's literally up to you. And when I got my car, I only done the engine oil and I done the air filter element, which is the air intake. So add that, okay. And we're basically ready to add it into the car. So let's just get the OBD and plug it into the car. So on BMWs, I'm pretty sure it's always underneath on the right side. Just plug it in. And my inner cable goes into the back here. So let me show you guys the before real quick. You can see whenever you go into the service history, the latest one is 2023 and the first one is 2019. So you see, I can't score any more up. Let's quickly go and add it into the car. And coding this is really quick, but I'd recommend just to press your start stop button three times just to enter into diagnostic mode, just to be safe and make sure the car doesn't turn off. So one, two, three. The car will start up and go into diagnostic mode. And now, when you're on your computer, I'd go down to Wi-Fi and I'd put it to airplane mode or turn off Wi-Fi just to make sure we don't have any connection interfering while we're coding. Any interference could be bad when you're coding into a car. And then one more thing we can do is go into control panel, go into network and internet, network and sharing center. At the top left, you can see this change adapter settings. And if you want to be extra safe, you can disable the wireless network connection. And while you're connected to the car with the OBD, you can see here it says unidentified network. This is what we want. For example, if I turn it off, you can see that goes into network cable unplugged. So you want to make sure when you plug it in, look at this and it's going to identify and it should say unidentified network. So after all this is done, we're basically ready to code. And it's actually very simple. So I'll show you guys kind of like a POV while being at the screen so you can see what's happening. So whenever we press right to the car, click on detect, it's going to get the IP. And then you can see here at the bottom, make sure erase all service data is checked. Otherwise, you're just going to duplicate everything and then you can click start. Once you click start, your head unit is going to reset. And once it reboots, your service history should be updated. So we can let the head unit boot up. Let's go back to car, vehicle status, service requirements, service. And now you can see the brand new one that we literally just done is there. And it's actually that simple. And while editing, I realized when you look at the new service that I added as an independent workshop, you can see that the workshop code doesn't show up. So if you didn't have a code as well, you can just write your service as an independent workshop with the five zeros. So now we have the one from 2019 up to 2023. And we also have the new 2025 that I done just a couple months ago. So you can really see how easy this was. The hardest part was probably writing down all your previous history. And once it's had complete, you can safely now unplug everything from your car. You cannot damage anything. So let me unplug mine. And let's also turn off airplane mode. So now that the history is updated, we can go back into the control panel and we can re-enable our Wi-Fi. So let's go back into control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and right here we can enable it. And now of course, once we finish it, it's not even raining anymore. Never mind, as soon as I say it, I can feel the rain now. But yeah, sorry for not uploading for a while. I literally bought the front splitter and the side skirts. The side skirts I have right now, but the front splitter, it's gonna take around two weeks, maybe even three weeks. I don't know why Max didn't take so long. To be fair, I did think it's gonna be way quicker than that. So I had to quickly film this video. So hopefully you guys did learn something new, how to update the service history in your car. And this is also a new lens and a new mic. So tell me what you guys think. And I'm pretty sure that's all I have to say. The cars come along so well. I really cannot wait for the front splitter and the side skirts.
And let me know if you guys want me to lower the car as well. Because I am thinking about lowering my car, but I'm really scared about the ride quality. Let me know if any of you guys have lowered your 330e and with what springs maybe you used and how the ride quality is. I see that a lot of people are using the Ibach springs or Cobra springs. And the Cobra springs are actually way cheaper, so, so that's what I might do if I do go to lower my car. And I think that's basically it for this video. For sake. And let me know if you guys would also like some other vlogs like maybe some car meets or car events because I recorded some stuff at the Cannonball event. I might put it up at the end of the video so you guys can see. And let me know if that's something that you guys would want to see as well because mainly right now I'm just going for like tutorial videos or like you know something you, you guys find helpful. But I do want to switch over to like actual vlogs really soon and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Ireland by the way. Yep. Whenever I watch people in America it looks so nice because you know the sun is shining it's so vibrant. And then when you see Ireland. Lovely stuff. 251 is up. Look at that fucking exhaust. Look at bro, look at that shit. I mean, we just cruising, you know. I mean, fucking yeah. YouTuber and that five minutes subscribers yeah. on the way. Way make sure you like, subscribe, Hell everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! We're about to get busy. Busy for what, bro? Read a book and feel empowered Smoking on that sour Got me counting down the hours Thinking of all the shit that they could do But won't allow us Then I realized they all some fucking cowards the